Hey, good morning, guys. Um, so I just turned the bad boy on. Uh, it's been a while since I talked to you, and I think it's time that I finally explain um, how I'm using this beautiful machine, do I like it, and how it's been this past few weeks. Um, so far, I can only say good things, and I really, really enjoy playing around with it. It's really been a lot of... Um, Positive emotions connected to this and I really like it. The only problem I had was with my grinders. So as I told you many times before, I had the Eureka Oro single dose Mignon and I had to remove it because it has to go back. It's just not grinding properly. It's vibrating like crazy. It's just a grinder that's been really, really upsetting me for the past year. And finally, I decided to pull a trigger and get, get something else. So I got the Malkunig X54. And this is a good grinder. Uh, it's not the best. It also has its own quirks. So I'm really, really putting my eye out there for getting a single dose end game grinder. And I've been thinking about the Turins, the Time Wars and the new... Um, what was the new one? Oh, the Maza. Philos. So if you want to drop a line on what you think about it and which single dose grinder I should go for and you have any opinion on that, please put it down there in the comments. I would really like to discuss that with the community and see what are your opinions because there's not a lot of uh, information out there and it's not that easy to decide and actually make like a really reasonable and nice decision. Um, before we continue, I would like to ask you to subscribe and like. This will help me bring up the amount of people that are going to watch this channel. And I want to reach at least 1000 subscribers. This is really, really going to help me then to <coughs> achieve this goal. Go figure. <laughs> uh, for today, I want to go through the menu so that you can see what to expect in the menu of this device. I'm going to give a little bit of an opinion. We're going to make a cup of coffee. And then we're gonna clean this bad boy. And now it's flashing the clean me uh, <coughs> information there. I'm gonna show it up closer. Uh, and I wanna, and this is gonna be the first time I'm cleaning this device. I didn't do it before. So it's gonna not gonna be professional, but it's gonna be an amateur doing it so that you can follow with me. And then we see how that goes and how it works. So talk to you in a second. I just turned it on and it needs around 10 minutes on fast heat up to get on and I'm gonna turn it on when it shows me to do the flush so i show you how that works too it's set up to 94 degrees celsius because in my experimenting this gave me the best results so far when extracting uh, my coffees talk to you soon i know a lot of guys are interested in the tools i use every day so for coffee prep so i use this 3d printed funnel to not get the beans around this is the <clears throat> uh, the thing I use to spread the beans evenly, and it's from this MHV three bumper uh, company that's now really popular, and you can get this on AliExpress. Together with that, you get this uh, underlying element here, and then you have the tamper. And I wanted to use this one because it lodges into the uh, porta filter and doesn't allow me to wiggle left or right. So every time I know it's vertical and I can uh, put enough pressure that I need to tamp it out. It has the ridged uh, uh, bottom, so it leaves a nice uh, setup on the, uh, in the, of the, on the coffee bed. Uh, the needles, so to do the distribution, and it's a nice distribution tool. It works well, it has a little magnet, so you can just settle it here on this little uh, spot and you can keep it right there uh, apart from that I have a little shot mirror I got and it shows me the bottom of the porta filter this re this works really well and then the only other thing is the time war mini scale that I have already for a while and I use it to um, take care of the of the beans or the amounts uh, so far, since I've been using the Malkunig, I keep the coffee in the hopper. I usually don't doze the, the full hopper, so the half a kilo, 
but I keep it like this. This is enough for two or three days. I don't think my beans get any heavy stale problem for it. I used to keep the porta filter holder, but I removed it and now I'm grinding directly into the cup. And I realized for this coffee, if it's around 16 seconds, I get around 18 grams out, plus minus few grams, but then I can easily just touch it up and doze up to the level I need. So this, this works pretty well. Um, so that's it for the equipment. There's a variety of cups. My favorites right now are these double walled and they're from, uh, from uh, Klafstein. And they didn't cost a lot. I think they were around 15 euros and you get six of them and they look pretty well and they do their job and you can see your coffee uh, spreading out. Another one I really like are these espresso cups that have these little dots on it. This is from a company called Inca here in Croatia. Uh, they are pretty nice and they come in a variety of colors. So there's light blue, there's like orange yellow and stuff and i have larger ones for milk coffees but don't expect much from these because i did not do any steaming or, or so because i'm not that much into steaming milk or having milky coffee uh, the puck i use as a screen protector uh, is this one so this is also from the same company the up oh, there it is the bomber and you put it actually like this so the water spreads evenly and you can see that when you prepare the pucks let me see if one of these is intact or is not going to fall apart so i can show you how it looks like you see there you can see where the water was spread so i like that because it evenly spreads the water through the puck pucks have a good uh, form they come out clean and you can knock them out without a problem in my porta filter, I have their screen. Let's see if the guy is coming out. Yeah. So it's a 18 grams extraction screen. Uh, porta filter, right? It's pretty nice. The holes look nice. So this is the upgrades I made to the original that came in the box when I purchased the machine. Am I happy with it? Yes, I am. Uh, by the way, there was a lot of comments on the flow control. So this is the default position. So this is closed fully. You go one full turn and then a little bit more. So this is the typical flow that you should have for the Profitec machine. And of course, to fully open it up, you can go all the way to one full turn additionally. Uh, but I'm going to return it here. Uh, I know there is a video out there saying that you don't need flow control, that you can ditch it. I would disagree uh, because in my opinion, you need the flow control. It saved my uh, espresso extraction so many times and it did wonders. It allowed me to really, uh, if I underdosed, overdosed, if the flow is not correct, even if there's any... Uh, how do you say streams coming out so there's problems with the extractions i can quickly turn it off or control the pressure and really save the save the the coffee beans and not waste them yeah it's not going to be the perfect espresso extraction it's not going to be the ultimate flavor you you wanted it's not going to be the god shot but it's going to be espresso and you're going to drink it and you're going to be happy because you're going to get your dose and it's going to be drinkable and it's, and even in that form it's going to be way above the things you get in a regular coffee shop and the the worst thing i've noticed once you get into this that even some specialty coffee shops uh, tend to prepare coffees which are under extracted like super uh, sour to the level that it's not because of the coffee it's just sour it's like lemon it really squeezes your mouth or you get them over extracted and really bitter so now i'm having trouble thinking should i return such a coffee because here in Croatia for a double shot espresso in specialty coffee, you're charged around three euros, which I think is fine. But then the baristas should really take care that they do a proper extraction and then you don't need to pay for a sour candy. 
but that's just my opinion. I really got hooked on this device and I'm almost not drinking any coffees anywhere else except here. Uh, cool thing, guys, just happened. So as you can see, the machine got overheated. It goes to 142 and now it's asking you to flush so it can go down to a proper uh, temperature. So let me set this up and flush it so you can see how that works. Back. The, because it reached the highest temperature, now it's trying to cool down on its own, but at the same time it's telling me that I should do the flush. So I'm gonna do it here. You usually do it for 20 seconds. And you only do this when you're in the fast heat up mode where you wanna save time. So it should preheat in 10 minutes. And then through doing this flushing, you need to do it for 20 seconds and it should cool down the machine, but heat up your brew head and your porta filters so they're ready for your brew. So that's about 20 seconds. And let's see what we have now. So it's at 90, 90 degrees. It's gonna start falling down a little bit. This is typical, don't worry about that because there's a delayed reaction and then it's gonna start heating up and come to 94. I usually like to leave it like this for a few more seconds because I wanna make sure everything is fine. And this little flashy thing that you see here, it's the cleaning reminder. So the one I told you that activated after, you can set it in the settings. When do you want it activated? I put it for 140 cups. So that's why today we're gonna to also clean the machine and see how that works. I bought a cleaner off Amazon, I got it delivered. So now we need to test it. Be back in a second. While the device is heating up to a proper uh, temperature hello this is super reflective so you can really see everything i have to be careful when choosing the angles i want to go with you through the menu so you can see this new menu that came so this is the oled screen and it's really nice and you can really see it in like whatever situation there is you right now my uh, steam boiler is off but you can turn it on if you press the right one for one second and here you can see it's off because it still didn't warm up and it's starting to warm up, but I don't need it right now. So I'm gonna do this and turn it off. So this is great because just with the push of a button, you can turn on, on or off your, your steam boiler. If you hold it for longer, so if you hold the right one for a few seconds, then you're gonna turn on the pre-infusion, which you have in the settings that you can set up on your own later on. I'm not using it because I'm using a darker roast, so I don't like to pre-infuse at this level. So I turned it off again, and I like to directly brew, and, I'm gonna, and it really does affect the flavor in a proper way. I'm gonna show you that later on. You enter the menu by pushing these two buttons for a few seconds. There you go. So first is the brew temperature. If you, hoppala, it falls out if you don't use it for a few seconds, so we have to be quickly, quick. Brew temperature, the right you confirm it, you can go up and down. I put it on 94, not uh, 93, not 94. If you leave it, it's gonna confirm and then it's gonna drop out to the previous menu. Here you switch, so you have steam enabled, pre-infusion, you can go in and then you have two elements, so it's on or off. And once you put it on, then it's gonna go to the next one. So active pre-infusion, this is for how long it's gonna pump water into the system. I have it set to three seconds. And then we have the passive pre-infusion for how long it's gonna uh, not do anything and just hold the pressure before pumping the water. And I've put that for five seconds. So total eight seconds of pre-infusion once I wanna use it. After that, you have the eco mode that you can turn on or off. Cleaning reminder, here it is. So I put it for a hundred cups. You can put more or less and I decided a hundred is enough. Uh, you, here is the reset reminder. We're going to do that later on today. Um, let me just go back. Uh, because it goes quick, I have to talk faster to go through it. Advanced user settings, you can turn them on or off. Here they're on. By default, when you buy the machine, they're off. And by advanced, I mean the timer one. Here is the filter reminder. If you have a filter uh, put into the water tank, then you can use this to know when to change it. Timer is enabled. I enabled it because I like to leave the machine overnight. So in the morning when I wake up, it's already nice and warm. You can set up the clock. Right now it's Saturday, 9.28 a.m. So I left it like this. And you also set the 
the time of the day, so it's Saturday. After that, you can set the schedule and you have each day. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And for Monday, for example, you set. So it goes on at this time and off at different other time. Uh, one more example. So because that one was quick. So you can see here it's going on at 6, shutting off at 7.30, then turning on at 3.30 and shutting off at 5. When I get from work, I have it ready for making coffee. Another thing, so the tank mode, it's on because it's not plugged in. Temperature unit, it's Celsius because we don't use Fahrenheit here in Croatia. Uh, coffee offset correction, you can put it here if you need it. There's a two degrees Celsius set by default and I think it's okay. Fast heating, I enabled it, so that's why we had to flush it so to get the machine heat up once it gets overheated. Brew temperature, so we're back on the beginning of the menu. So that would be the menu, and now we can, I think, go and make one cup of coffee and then clean the machine, and after that I can give some uh, opinions on using this machine for the past few weeks. Talk to you soon. Okay, so let's make a cup of coffee. And uh, then once we do that, we're gonna clean the machine and go through that process. It's gonna be the first time for me. Uh, the steam wand here usually bothers me, so I just put it like this so it doesn't cause any trouble to me. Um, I'm gonna try to uh, really catch the flow and show you how the extraction works, but let's prepare the puck first. So it's already heated up. There's some residual, residual water from the time when we hit to flush it, to heat it up properly. Uh, I'm gonna leave it there to still warm up a little bit. Uh, I dropped some water there. And you see, every time you wanna film something, that's the time when you make the most mess. <laughs> and other times, there is none. So let's tear the cup. So that's good. And let's get the grinder on. Okay, nice and fluffy beans. So we have 18 grams exactly. As you can see here, maybe it's gonna show up. Uh, the grounds are nice and fluffy. Let's, I like to stir them also in the cup before putting them into the porta filter. And you're gonna notice why, because they lose a lot of air and static electricity. And they kind of drop there, you see? So this makes it easier to deal with it further. So now, now let's clean the porta filter screw on and transfer the ground coffee. At this point, I like to use the VDT again to spread it nicely. And because these are nice and fluffy, really well ground beans, <clears throat> I like to do it a few more times. Then I like to knock it so everything goes down. Unscrew the top and use the distribution tool. And it just drops out the amount it needs to. Rotate it quickly, get a few grounds there, and press it in nicely. And there you have it. I think you can see the ridges and the puck is there. One more final thing I like to drop is the as I said, the cup, uh, the, the, the screen protector, and then it's ready to be brewed. Let's drop out any excess hot water, lock this in, and let's try to change the perspective so you can see more easily what's going on there when getting the coffee out. Uh, okay. So that's there. Let's get the scale underneath there and the cup. Let's tear it. There it is. 
temperature is ready and let's hit the button. So there is no pre-infusion. Oh, yeah, there is now because we left it on on purpose. I completely forgot about that. So we did the pre-infusion in this case, but this is perfectly fine. And let's get the extraction out. And now it was really, really, really quick, but we need to remember that we had a first step in on, and that was the, let's turn off the pre-infusion. Just a second, I pushed the wrong button. Okay, um, <laughs> we need to repeat this shot. So this one was with the pre-infusion and since this is a dark roasted beans, they went through uh, quite fast, but you can see the crema and everything. Let me prepare, uh, prepare the setup again and let's go for another shot. But I'm gonna, this is actually cool because I can show you then what happens with the, with the pluck. So we need to knock it off a little bit. That's the screen. Since everything is hot, I just leave it for a few seconds. And then because the porta filter is warm, it's gonna quickly dry out the puck and once it's dried out the puck is gonna be ready and cleaned easily okay so the porta filter is clean again let's do this again so let's tear the cup there it is and let's This time we got 18.3. So you see, we didn't do anything to the grinder. It was just preset and we used grinds on its own. 0.3 difference is fine by me. It's not so big that it's gonna cause any trouble. So we can work with that. I just wanna clean quickly the box screen. Okay, so let's get this second cup up and running. We stir the beans quickly again before we transfer them. And then we do the VDT. off the distributor you see it falls out and then you just put it in place and rotate and it's gonna distribute the beans just push it one more time in and get the screen positioned there we go uh, let's see the shower screen is okay lock it in and let's go for the next shot. This time without the pre-infusion. But this is now good because in one video you saw the pre-infusion at work. <clears throat> now you're gonna see how it works without it. So there's our shot, looking okay. The pressure is a little bit high, so I'm just gonna reduce it a tiny bit. I keep it at nine. The extraction is flowing nice. So we have 18 in and it's, we're gonna stop it at 37, so 39 total because it was a little slow because of the video. I hope you can see here how nicely this coffee spreads. So I'm really happy with the coffee. 
And let's try these two cups and see how each of them tastes. <clears throat> so we have the, the, the previous cup, so the first one. And let's see. Oh, with pre-infusion pre, pre in, it didn't destroy the cup. It's actually very drinkable and fine. A little bit maybe bitter because from the over extraction due to the pre-infusion. And let's try this one, which ha did not have any pre-infusion. This one is a bit sweeter, which means it's less extracted and it's actually extracted in the perfect way. So this is a really, really good cup. And because it's dark roasted coffee, you would expect it to be like, you know, bitter and, ro and wrong and like not really nice. Not true. <laughs> it's really, really well extracted <clears throat> and you really get nice cups once you get the hang of it. So now I'm going to finish my coffee and breakfast and then we're going to clean the machine and record that too. So, you know, uh, that you go with me through the whole process. Talk to you soon, guys. Uh, before we start, there's one more thing people complain about, and that's putting water in the Profitec devices. It's a lot of trouble. It's not. You don't need to remove your cups, so that's why you have this protection around it. You just pick up the whole tray, you put it down, and then you can easily refill your water tank. I always use filtered water because it removes a lot of scale and allows me to use proper water. So. When I <clears throat> decide to descale the device one day, I don't have a lot of trouble with that. You put it back in or on and that's it. The easiest way to refill the water tank ever. Now let's get to the cleaning part. Okay, so let's clean this machine. And this sounds <laughs> pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty nice to say. Um, this is the first time that I'm doing this. So if I make some wrong steps, don't be too, too rough on me. Um, so I read the instructions. I bought the machine cleaner. I got it delivered to me a few days ago. I will not say the brand because there's no point. Choose just any uh, coffee machine cleaner that you want or have or need. Um, so, I'm not sure if you can see it right away, but there's the flashing thing. So I set it up to flash <clears throat> after 100 cups. This you choose on your own. I decided to go after 100 cups because I just wanna clean it for the first time. So the instruction says that I need to remove the regular uh, sieve with the setup and I'm just gonna put it aside. And then I have my other one that has a blind filter basket. So you can see it here. And for the starters, I need to put in there around four or five grams of the cleaning detergent for the espresso machine. Uh, since I'm doing it for the first time, I know you put it, probably some of you just put it out of whatever, but I just wanna do it the proper way. So there's four grams in the, in the cup in the scoop, that's it. Just gonna pull this aside, clean the leftovers that fell here, because I think this is some kind of a stronger substance. And basically now you take this. Oh, and before that, it said that I need to use the brush to rub a little bit on the gasket. Nothing is coming out. I'm gonna just take my little screen and then it said that I should also do it on the shower screen. Uh, for this first cleaning I'm not gonna take the shower screen out. I know people would say you should. I'm gonna do that for the next one after another hundred cups. So basically you're supposed to put your blind filter in with the liquids. Uh, it's opened to the proper position, it's warmed up and now we need to open it and once we open it, we need to let it fill with water and then not put it to a, to a full, but 45 degrees for around 40 seconds. Uh, it's gonna be like 40 seconds in general. I think we can use Alexa for that. 
Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I th I'm, I'm pretty sure we can do it on our own. So let's fill it in and it's full and we stop it to the 45 degrees and we keep it like this. So for let's 40, around 40 seconds, it's at two bar pressure. So I think that's around 10 seconds right now. I think we are okay. I would call that around 20. And we keep it further, we keep it further. I would say now it's around 30 seconds. If it's longer than that, that's also fine. I mean, that's not a problem. Let's call this 30 and 10 more. Maybe it was 30. I don't care if it's 50. Okay, I think that would be enough. And now it says that we need to just pull it down and let all the gunk flow out. So we put it down. Oh, and it really did come out. Uh, nasty. Okay, let's fill it in again. And just put it there, keep it for a few seconds. And we need to keep washing it out until anything coming out is just pure water. So I think it's gonna need a few rin rinsing. Uh, up. Up. Just gonna... Oh yeah, there's still nasty stuff coming out oh yeah one more okay now you're supposed to take it off because there's still this liquid I'm not sure if you can see it there's some coffee in it and stuff but it didn't dissolve so this is what kind of wonders bothers me why it didn't happen because it's supposed to dissolve but okay maybe the cleaner is not as good as advertised so please tell me in the comments is it supposed to dissolve on its own or is it okay if it stays like this let me clean the porta filter fully and now that it's clean I'm just gonna wipe it off and get back into it to further rinse it away. So water in and clear it out. Water in, clear it out. So they said open and keep running it for a few seconds and then clear it out again it's gonna take a while until the water coming out it's nice and clear just to make sure that everything is cleared out um, it's pretty much interesting to see that the what we used did not dissolve properly I'm not too happy with that but okay so I think now the water is relatively cleanish just gonna make another one okay 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 we take it off we let everything dry, come out and then we're gonna switch the porta filter. Let's see how it looks like from the underneath there. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks cleaner. Let me try and see if I can get you in there. Can you see that? I'm not sure if it's focusing properly, but it looks pretty much clean. Uh, let me fix the position. OK, 
Okay, let's get it back in there. You can see it in the upper part looks clean. And now I'm just gonna put the clean part of filter and let it run out for around 40 seconds. Just let it rinse everything out if there's anything left. There we go. Let's pull it out and let's drop that water into the sink. But before we drop it, I'll move the camera so that you can see what I'm getting rid of. Give me a second. Let's be careful with this. It's full and it's hot. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. So let's pull this off. And we can see what we have here. So I cleaned it. So if there's any residue, it's from the coffee. So there are some coffee elements and stuff. So it really did its job and really pulled out gunk. So yes, clean your machine with this thing. And don't forget, once you clean it and everything is nice, that you need to rinse it properly. And probably you need to use some food safe lubricant to lubricate the levers and stuff. I'm going to do that not right away, but after next cleaning, most probably. Okay, so everything is cleaned and put to its place. Uh, the final thing I want to do is make a cup but before making the cup i need to reset the brew reminder for the next cleaning as you can see this thing is still flashing so as i told you before we do the double press we enter the menu and then we go down no pre-infusion no eco mode cleaning reminder reset the reminder Okay, there, it should be reset. Yes, it is. Okay, let's make a cup of coffee. And then let's talk a few more minutes about my uh, opinion on the Profitec drive and my user experience after all this time. So reset the cup. Uh, by the way, I'm gonna release after this video, the unboxing for the Malkuni grinder. And later when I get the, probably I'm getting the uh, uh, just a second, the Philos uh, single dose grinder. After that one, I'm going to use this one, 18.1, perfect. I'm going to use this one as my grinder for the decaf. So I always stir it up to get all the fluffy stuff out. There's some condensation of water, so we clean that up. We put the our little funnel, we drop that there. We stir it one more time to make sure it's evenly distributed. I'm not doing the, the water thing for the beans because the grinder on its own, it's not causing a lot of static. So that's get, that gets the job properly done. There we go. I think you can see it here. And let's just drop the, <clears throat> the part. And let's get cooking. Uh, I need my cup. Where is the cup? I washed the cup. I like to use these clear see-through cups because it's a nicer way of showing how the espresso is pouring out and how it's evolving. Uh, I don't like these touchy scales and all of the new ones don't have physical buttons, but they have these these touch buttons and it kind of you do a lot of wrong uh, touches and it's making a lot of unnecessary sounds and it's really 
buttering me a little bit. Okay, so it's reset and let's brew away. Okay, there is the flow. The pressure is okay. And let's get to the magic number, 36. Okay, it was 38 and it was 17 seconds. That's not long enough, but the beans have been in there for quite some time, uh, longer than necessary. And here you can, I think, see how nice it separates and has a beautiful crema to it. Okay, let me re reposition cameras and let's talk about the device for a few seconds. <sighs> okay, guys. Uh, I still didn't have time to stir it, but we can try it. Um, I'm by no means a professional, so just a guy who loves coffee and I spend a lot of time exploring it and it's been a, something that was really inspiring to me and allowing me to go through during my PhD and everything and gave me something to uh, look forward to, something to play with and something to really enjoy. So for me, doing coffee and these videos, it's very exciting. Um, you guys had a, like a beautiful uh, reaction to my first video. I, I didn't honestly like it the way I made it, but you guys said it's nice and really had some nice discussion and questions down in the comment section. And I really do appreciate that. Please keep them coming. I really like feedback and your, and your <coughs> experiences. None of these videos are sponsored. I'm buying all this equipment on my own. I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna keep doing that if I can, depending on the finances. And we're gonna see if any sponsorships show up. I'm gonna say that in the video. So it's not gonna be that I'm doing a sponsoring video and not telling you that, guys. I wanna have an honest talk with the community and, and just say as it is. Um, for me, it was quite frustrating at the beginning to use the Eureka because I thought the grinder was doing the, the job well and that I'm the one with the problem. Uh, it was a really frustrating first week because I was trying to put the proper dose in and then grind it with the, with the shower screen uh, protector on and then off. And then, you know, you grind 18 grams first time. It's all great. The coffee comes out feeling fantastic and then you do the same thing and everything is the same you don't change anything the same coffee you keep it in the freezer you you do the you do the same th cup and then it starts channeling like crazy and then i was wondering what's going on and then i decided to do an experiment i took my uh easy presso uh hand grinder and i started grinding coffee with it and look and behold there was no longer any problems so i decided to go and get another grinder and that's this Malkunig. And Malkunig is a really good grinder in the sense that it's the, the time dose is good. If you're making espressos every morning like I do, I make two espressos in the morning. I make two or one more in the afternoon, especially if I have some guests around. It's gonna get the job done and it's gonna be something that you're really gonna uh, like. Um, and the beans are not gonna go stale if they're there for one or two days. So I just put 150 grams in and that's enough for like two days of, of coffee. And then after that, I just refill it and keep it like that. Uh, once I get the, uh, I keep forgetting the name. So I think it's Maza Filos or it's, yeah, I think it's Maza Filos. Uh, once I get the, those, that grinder in, I think it's gonna be the final one because I, I decided I just wanna invest money and get a single dose grinder that looks nice. I've been looking into Time Morris and Turin's and I'm a little bit afraid of, of the quality of the engine. Not the grinding per se, but longevity. Because putting in seven, 800 or 1,000 euros, it's a lot of money. And I wanna make sure I get a return of the investment so it lasts me a long time. One of the reasons I took Profitech over the others, and you know which machine I'm talking about, is because I expect it to last at least for 10 years. If I take care of it, uh, rinse it, go through these uh, uh, cycles and just, you know, take care of it. Um, <laughs> through all this talk, I forgot to taste the coffee, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, it ran too quickly. Uh, it was only 17 seconds to get everything out, so it's a little bit on the sour side, but it's still drinkable. Uh, I forgot to, you know, use the 
the flow control and uh, sl slow down the flow so I can get the uh, the full flavor out and not the as as acidic part that I have now, but it's fully drinkable espresso and I'm gonna finish this cup. Um, so yes, uh, do I have any regrets? No. Is Profitech everything I wanted it to be? I think personally I have everything. And I honestly, first time I wanted to go with Profitech Pro 700, but seeing this updated one with the new control center and the new options, I think it's, it's a full, full thing. I don't think anybody, or at least in my opinion, needs anything bigger, but this is already an expensive device on its own. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. And now I need to just fix the grinder and the Malkunig is doing its job, but I think uh, the Maza Philos with its uh, unified <clears throat> particle sizes, at least that's what I promised, is going to give me a much better experience. But we're going to see that when it comes to that. I don't want to say anything else. So now it's uh, it's start, start of January. They said it's going to come out, I think, beginning of February or it's going to go in production and be available in March. I'll try to save some uh, save up some money and get it and then I'm going to test it and see if it works. The Eureka is going back to the uh, where I bought it. I hope they're going to know what to do and fix it. And once they fix it, I think I'm going to sell it because I'm a little bit kind of angry at Eureka uh, for releasing it the first time because I, I was what, the one first guy who bought it. So as soon as it was out on the market, I bought the, the, the first the first uh, shipment and that was not a good idea. So I expect a lot of it from from the company, but they did not represent. And yeah, I have no problem saying that. So if you have any other questions, any advices about the single dose grinder, that's gonna be great, but let's not go above 1000 euros, please, because I think I need to be a little bit realistic, so yeah, uh, the large Malkunig or some other ones, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Um, give me your opinions, talks, everything. Uh, if there's anything else you want me to test or show you, I'll be happy to do that because I wanna give back to the community and help. Uh, it's been a journey, it still is a journey, and I'm still gonna make some other videos. Just need to grab some time and do that. So thanks for tuning in today. I hope I didn't bother you too much, guys. And let's stay in touch and chit chat, talk and, and see. So cheers, guys.